Hi, you're Rich Lewis from NDXTesting.com. And if you're tuning into this channel, it's because you're probably going to have an EMG and you find yourself a little nervous because you do not know what to expect. Well, I want you to take a deep breath and, and kind of just relax yourself a little bit because in reality, you have nothing to worry about. I'm going to give you a very basic but thorough explanation and that way you could be in complete control when you go into the medical facility. Okay, with that being said, what is an EMG? Well, an EMG, it's a nerve and muscle examination. And those are the two key words that you need to remember. Just in case anyone asks, what's an EMG? Well, it's a nerve and muscle study. Now, the nerve examination is done by using electrical impulses on the extremities, meaning arms or legs. The muscle examination is done completely different. We use a needle electrode to pinch the muscle and record the activity of that muscle being tested. And depending on your clinical diagnosis, that could be done either on the neck, shoulders, arms, or back, thighs, or legs. Now, there's many reasons why a person might need this test. You can have neck pain, or your shoulder could be compromised, or maybe some implications in the elbow, the tingling and numbness in the hands and fingers, lower back pain, sometimes radiating into the hip, your knee might be affected, ankle sprain associated with some tingling and numbness in the toes, or perhaps some discomfort in the plantar. Or maybe you're up in age and the electrodiagnostic medicine physician wants to check the state of your peripheral or nervous system, just to make sure if things are within normal range, or perhaps you might need some treatment. Or maybe you got into a car accident, got hurt at work, or slip and fall in someone's business or personal property. Those are the major reasons why a person might need this test. So now that you have an idea about the EMG study, let's talk about the actual performance. Now remember, they are going to use electrical impulses for the nerve examination, and they're going to use needle electrodes for the muscle study. It's one exam, but two different procedures. Now, when you go into the medical facility, usually you're going to have the nerve examination first. And that's going to be performed either by a highly trained technologist or a registered technologist. Honestly, I recommend you do this exam with a registered technologist, but a highly trained technologist would be okay too. Now, when I see a patient, I like to establish good communication with that patient uh, and make the patient feel as, as comfortable uh, as possible. I like to go over all the medical history, all the chief complaints, ask the patient uh, a few question, questions about their current complaints. I also like to make the patient feel uh, at ease and as comfortable as possible. Uh, sometimes they come in a little bit nervous. Uh, they had a bad experience before uh, with this exam, or, or maybe they heard neg uh, negative things about the test. They feel a little nervous, and my job is to make them feel as comfortable uh, as possible. Now, when I start the exam, let's just say I start with the upper extremities. Let's just say I, I get a patient that has maybe a little neck pain and radiating to the uh, right or uh, left uh, upper extremities. So I start the exam at the level of the wrist. Now, I communicate with the patient that they're not going to feel anything, just to let me know when they feel a slight impulse. And then all I do is just increase the intensity. I use the exact amount of intensity that that patient needs for the nerves to depolarize. And if you use that technique, it's going to feel, uh, the patient's going to feel comfortable, especially when you start and they don't feel anything. Now, if you start high, which a lot of technicians do, and they start too high, that can make uh, the patient feel uncomfortable instantly. That can irritate the patient. It could be painful. It could be very uncomfortable, and that's not a good thing. I like to start at zero, not even low, but at at zero, and I make sure that I communicate that uh, to the uh, to the patient. Now, where I stimulate, I stimulate the level of the wrist. This is a motor reflex, the thumb response. Stimulate at the level of the uh, elbow by the brachial artery. Motor reflex, the whole arm response. I stimulate at the level of the wrist. Last two fingers respond, motor reflex right too. At the elbow, motor reflex. Now, you have to respond when we use electrical impulses. Now, similarly to when you have a neurological examination and it's happy on the knee and you respond. Now, if you don't respond, that's a uh, bad thing. So if you have pinpoint precision as far as where, where you're going to stimulate, and if you start uh, at zero and then just use the exact amount of intensity that the patient needs, then the nerve examination is going to uh, it'll be fine. Often the problem is the technicians start with the intensity higher. That's how uh, they train. And later on in the video, I'm going to kind of cover that a little bit, why uh, they're trained that way. 
but it's really logical. You know, some patients are sensitive, electrically sensitive, so you don't want to start high. Your job as a technologist is to be able to um, make the situation as positive uh, as possible. Now, there's no reason to tell the patient that the test is going to be uncomfortable. Uh, your job as a technician is to be able to uh, make the, the test as comfortable as possible. Do not uh, inculcate any negativity into the patient's mind because the truth of the matter is that some patients think that the test is cool. Some patients uh, think that the test is it's not a big deal. It's not uncomfortable. Some patients like the test. Then again, some patients don't like the test. Some patients think that the patient is uncomfortable. I mean, that the test is uncomfortable. And some patients think that the test might be a little painful. And some patients are sensitive. Well, my job is to be able to make the situation as, 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 uh, as comfortable as possible, as easy as possible, and as positive as possible. Uh, let the patient judge for themselves uh, what the situation is going to be. I'm not going to establish uh, or say any negativity into the patient's mind and, and start off on the road, no. So the, if the nerve examination is done precisely, if the technician knows exactly, uh, uh, if, he, if he knows what he's doing, if he establishes good communication with, uh, with that patient, make the patient feel uh, comfortable, it's not, a, it's, not going to be, it's not going to be a big deal. So that electrical part, where we use electrical impulses in the extremity, whether upper or lower, you have really nothing uh, to worry about. Now, let's talk about the performance of the EMG, which is the muscle examination. They're going to use needle electrodes to uh, penetrate the muscle and record the muscle activity. Now, does it hurt? Absolutely not. I've had this test a million times when we used to practice. Now, if you could pinch yourself, okay, if you pinch your skin, that's basically what it's going to feel like. Now, if they start in the upper extremities, most likely they'll probably start at the level of the traps muscle, the trapezius muscle, okay? Stick the needle in, they pinch the needle in, Sometimes, you know, I've seen doctors, and I think this is actually a good technique, they kind of just, they kind of just pull the skin, they pull the skin in the traps, and they poke you in, they poke you with the needle, and you can record the uh, muscle activity there. You don't even have to go that deep. When they study the muscle and they, rec they record the, the electrical activity, the muscle is going to be nice and relaxed. Nothing's going to happen. You're gonna get normal waves. Now. If you do have some inflammation, okay, let's just say you slip and fall, and you have a lot of pain on that on, on, on the deltoid muscle, and you stick a needle in there, you're gonna have electrical activity all over the place. That's what you call increased electro, uh, increase, uh, electrical activity. The doctor will be able to be able to know that there's a problem there in that muscle. So the same thing with the neck. If you have pinpoint precision as far as what you're going to do, the uh, the, the the doctor. Uh, penetrates the muscle and and records the activity. Now, we discussed the uppers for a little bit. I'm just kind of letting you know that you have really nothing to worry about. The electrical impulses that that, that uh, we're going to use, at least in, in my uh, clinical uh, facility, we use the exact amount of intensity that you need for the nerves to depolarize. The doctor comes in, he uses the needle electrode, penetrates the muscle. Uh, he, if he has good hands and, and good uh, precision, as far as ways he's going to uh, use that needle or the muscle he's going to sample, you got nothing to worry about. You got nothing to worry about it either. If you pinch yourself, that's basically what it's going to feel like. Well, if you ever had acupuncture in the past, then that's basically what it's going to uh, feel like. It's a pleasant experience. Sometimes people think that you go, they're going to use a needle and you're going to feel ele electricity at the same time. Remember, you don't feel any electricity when it comes to the muscle study. You only feel electrical impulses when it comes to the nerve examination. Anyway, I hope I'm not all over the place when it comes to this uh, explanation. I'm just kind of just rambling on and I'll do whatever editing we need to do so yeah, the video can come out uh, as, uh, edu as educational as possible. Let's talk about the lower extremities a little bit too. So when we start at the lower extremities, we start at the level of the ankle. Now, same thing. We're going to start at the ankle, and we want to stimulate at the level of the knee. Okay. Same thing. We start at zero. We we increase the intensity slightly, and then we use the exact amount of intensity that you need for the nerves to uh, react. So it will be the same thing. You have a, a little uh, toe twitch, a motor reflex when it comes to your toes, and when it comes to the level of the knee, it's going to be a a knee reflex. Uh, similarly, when you take a, a, um, a neurological examination and they kind of tap you in the knee and, and you respond, the same thing happens with, with nerve examination. You stimulate and it has to be a response. Now, if you don't respond, that, that's, a, um, that's a problem. So you have to respond. 
Now, the way we're able to uh, tell if, if the nerves are affected, we look at the shape of the nerve. Shape is everything in life. And uh, if that shape is a little bit uh, off, then we have to find out why. And we also look at the latency, which is the speed of the nerve. We also look at the amplitude, which is the height uh, of the nerve. We also look at the velocity, which we see how the nerve travels from uh, or communicates from point uh, to point. So we look at other uh, different uh, type of components to be able to establish if the nerve is affected uh, or not. But also it goes with the, uh, uh, the clinical diagnosis. Uh, first it starts with your chief complaints, okay? Then the doctor performs a clinical examination and establishes a clinical diagnosis that has to match your chief complaints. And then of course when you have uh, a diagnostic study, the diagnostic findings have to match the uh, chief complaints and the clinical diagnosis. And also if you have MRIs and you have EMGs, usually we have two exams that kind of point in a similar direction and, and kind of uh, support uh, each other. But anyway, I hope that we were uh, helpful. Now, another thing that you can tell too if, 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 the, uh, if, the, uh, if the medical facility where you're going to have the study in, how they communicate, how that clinical examination is, is performed how they explain to you the exam, how the front desk communicates with you about uh, the, the exam. Now, when you take this exam and you're gonna go to the, when you're going to have a test, just make sure you dress comfortable. Sometimes I have patients, they come in with, uh, they're a little bit uh, dressed a little tight. Remember, the extremities are going to be tested, arms and legs. So if you have a problem in the lower extremities, Wear some comfortable pants where you can just kind of roll up your pants above the knee. Now, sometimes they are going to give you a gown or a pair of shorts, but if you don't have to change, then why change? Another thing, too, do not wear any lotion. Lotion creates uh, electrical interference. The electrodes won't stick. Electrodes are going to be all over the place. So then the drier you are, the better. Dress comfortable. Remember, you have nothing to worry about. But on the other hand, if you go to the wrong place, and, and there's some technicians that they use a lot of intensity. They don't start at zero. They start high. They have that thing already programmed high because that's the way they were trained. And let me tell you a little story too. 2007, I went to a seminar in electrodiagnostic medicine. They were talking about the performance of nerve examinations and electromyography studies, which are the muscle studies, EMGs with the needle electro. So the instructor, okay, a PhD in electrodiagnostics, said this. He said that he was going to perform a study at the, in the hospital. And when he was about to start the exam, he stimulates, he stimulates the patient and the patient kind of jumps up. All the wires and the amplifier and, and what the stimulator he was holding went up in the air. And he was like, wow, what a crazy reaction by this patient. And he said, what am I supposed to do? Start with the intensity at zero? Technicians, he said to the technicians, we don't have time to, to be babying patients, to lower, uh, the, to start with the intensity at zero. And I'm listening to this, I'm like, oh my goodness. Listen, the truth of the matter is that there are patients who are electrically sensitive. And I get those patients sometimes, and you have to kind of just work with them. A lot of times it's, it's, it's mental. So you never want to do that. So I was, I was uh, surprised that someone with that level of education will teach that. So what I'm trying to say is that there are technicians who are taught that way. There are people who are trained a little weird and, and if the technician is doing that type of work, then I can only imagine what the physician is going to do. The way he's going to insert that needle into, in, into the body. I've worked with some doctors and they don't have good technique. But anyway, if you like this video, uh, please uh, leave a comment, press a like. Now I'm going to come out with uh, more videos. This is a, a brand new channel. I'm going to talk about all sorts of electrodiagnostic medicine components, all sorts of neuropathies, different health topics, uh, things that can benefit you. Uh, a lot of uh, ladies' uh, technical uh, information. So if you want to subscribe, please do and turn on your notifications so when I uh, take out my next video, you'll be the first uh, to know. I hope this information has been helpful.